Artist Short Session. 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 You're looking at some recent work by Granville Carroll, who did his MFA in photography and related media from RIT's College of Art and Design. He combines self-portraiture, landscape, and digital image manipulation to explore themes of cosmic awareness, identity formation, and Afrofuturism. Granville's our guest, and he's going to make an exclusive artwork for us today on the short sesh. Granville, thanks so much for joining us on the short sesh today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, that is a stunningly beautiful cosmic cloak that you're wearing. Is that something you made yourself? You know, it's, uh, yeah, I just kind of uh, manifested it in the mind and here it is. That's the only way to manifest. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. So, so uh, we're going to spend a little time. I got a couple of questions for you. You know, you're part of the class of 2020. You just got your MFA in photo and related media from RIT. And class of 2020 it has a little extra meaning right now because of the pandemic situation. And it sort of encapsulates a, a huge number of students who ended the year virtually. Setting all that aside, I mean, why did you decide to go back to art school? Why did you go get your MFA? I don't know. It sounds kind of weird, but... It- Going to art school wasn't really about getting the degree, per se, um, but more so about the experience that I would have um, that you just don't really get uh, outside of sort of the institution in the same capacity. So part of it is about just embracing the unknown, uh, falling into a passion in which I didn't know a lot about, but I knew I felt very connected to, um, and then just sort of living for the experiences in the, in the community that sort of gets built through that. Did you kind of uh, fly through and kind of embrace everything as it came, or was it difficult in some ways? My teeth are. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful cosmic grill now that you have going. The right. Zoom capabilities here are just endless. It's, you can do anything you want, you know? <laughs> it's a virtual world. <laughs> but yeah, no, grad school, it was, it was a great experience, but it was difficult. It was challenging, um, you know, artistically. Uh, it was challenging just... You know, as an individual, as a person, it really kind of pushes you to grow and think about uh, what's really important to you and what is your voice. I think your work has some really visually attractive themes like the cosmos, your self-portraiture, the way you blend them together. But the themes you're exploring are pretty complex. I mean, you, you seem to be addressing things like the multiplicity of identities and the subject of Afrofuturism. So um, did your MFA experience kind of help you confront some of those issues or become more aware of those ideas? Or is that something you'd worked on quite a bit uh, previously? Definitely the MFA uh, really brought me to that awareness, uh, to the complexities within art making in general. But the funny thing is the way that I began working uh, by manipulating photographs, using the cosmos, patterns, landscapes, you know, it sort of stems from just my interests uh, in science fiction and the mystical and the spiritual. So entering grad school, I was confronted with this issue of racial representation um, because I created this body of work uh, called Black Serenity. Uh, that was really actually, it actually connects, I think, a lot to our current situation. Um, it was sort of getting at this idea of isolation versus solitude and the difference between the two. And there are these black images uh, with me as a black man in them. Uh, And so that was then perceived as images talking about the black experience, uh, which was not really what I was going for. (laughs) Um, And so it was something that I was reluctant to talk about uh, because I think in some ways the black experience is, it's not singular. Um, you know, even between people in my family, it's, it's a very different experience. Uh, so I was a little confused as to like what was being asked of me. Uh, so then I had to sort of think to myself and ask, um, well, how do I reconcile this sort of spiritual, um, otherworldly connection uh, with these like really heavy, deep topics of race and representation and what, you know, I guess people call the black experience and what is the black experience even. And so turning back to Afrofuturism, you know, which is this movement, this cultural movement that redefines the black identity through a number of different ways, but primarily using science fiction, using technology, spirituality, uh, culture in a number of different ways. 
Uh, so I was like, all right, where I can use this mode of making. Talks about these really important issues within uh, American society that for me is it's a really heavy topic, uh, but then also mix it in with this more, I don't know, limitless, boundless experience of just being a person um, and what that means when you're stripped of you know, any labels that are kind of thrust upon you or that you adopt uh, through society. Probably leads into my next question, which, um, you know, might be a, a little controversial, um, but I think it needs to be addressed just because of the nature of your work. Do you believe that there are extraterrestrials or are we the aliens? Oh, that is a deep question. I don't know. I think I think in some ways it's actually really vain um, for us to think that we're the only ones. So many different worlds out there that we haven't really even begun to fully understand. So I think, yes, yeah, aliens, I don't know. <laughs> but it's funny because I've also thought about the idea of like, what if we are sort of this seed that's been planted here on the earth? Um, from some other place, you know? Because you hear about some people who are like, oh, I long for the heavens, I long for the cosmos, and I feel like I'm supposed to be somewhere else. Yeah, and right. It's like the Prometheus theory. But it's also kind of like when we talk about climate change and how, how terrible we are to this planet, it's hard not to think that we are uh, some foreign element or a virus ourselves, right? Which is actually perfect because I um, watch The Day the Earth stood still last night, the 2008 version or whatever. Wow, you're really plugging into these themes right now. <laughs> right, it's like synchronicity, you know? The human race has a lot of potential, you know, to really do some amazing things um, in tandem with nature. Um, but again, we sort of have this vain mentality in a way in which we think we own the earth and we can do whatever we want to it. And it won't strike back, it won't uh, respond. We're worried about money and all these other sort of material and physical things. I mean, that's why I'm always so interested in the immaterial, mm -hmm. you know, the cosmic, uh, the ethereal, the things that we can't see, uh, but the things that we feel, because uh, I feel like that just has a lot more power to it. So you made us a piece today, uh, calling it a, a short sesh exclusive artwork that you've mm -hmm. made for us today. And we're going to take a look. Is there anything you want to say about the piece before we uh, dive in here? It's using new tools that I'm not super familiar with. <laughs> with this piece, I use After Effects to sort of, I don't know, just experiment and see. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's something new. Um, yeah. That was lovely. Certainly your interest in um, self-portraiture and sort of identity transformation over time is evident. And it's nice to see um, you do sort of a moving image piece in the in the vertical format. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like I was kind of saying uh, before about this whole idea of the unknown, um, you know, you sort of dive into this mode of working. Uh, you don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, it's always sort of a surprise. Because, you know, you have this, if you're working horizontally, you have all this space uh, and you can build depth a lot easier. Uh, whereas when you're working vertically, you don't have as much depth, it feels, to sort of work into. So yeah, so I'm excited to have learned a little bit of these skills to sort of continue challenging myself, um, you know, to work in these different ways that I'm not used to. At this point now that you're making the transition from art student to emerging artist, how do you confront the future? And I keep hearing the kind of theme from you about just diving into the unknown. Yeah, because I think that's really all we can ever do. Well put, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your cosmic self with us today. And uh, I hope we can dive into the unknown together in the future very soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a wonderful time. <laughs>